Marcus Mesilius Flavius E. Parcius Avidus c. 380–395 after 17 October 456 or in 457 was Western Roman Emperor from 8 or 9 July 455 to 17 October 456. He was a senator and a high-ranking officer both in the civil and military administration, as well as Bishop of Piacenza. A Gallo-Roman aristocrat, he opposed the reduction of the Western Roman Empire to Italy alone, both politically and from an administrative point of view. For this reason, as emperor he introduced several Gallic senators in the imperial administration. This policy, however, was opposed by the senatorial aristocracy and by the people of Rome, who had suffered from the sack of the city by the Vandals in 455. Avidus had a good relationship with the Visigoths, in particular with their king Theodoric II, who was a friend of his and who acclaimed Avidus emperor. The possibility of a strong and useful alliance between the Visigoths and Romans faded, however, when Theodoric invaded Hispania at Avidus's behest, which rendered him unable to help Avidus against the rebel Roman generals who deposed him. Biography <inaudible> 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 Origins and early career Avidus was born in Clermont to a family of the Gallo-Roman nobility. His father was possibly Flavius Julius Agricola, consul in 421. Avidus had two sons, Agricola Florida 455 living 507, Avir Illustris and Ectisius Avidus later Patricius and Magister Militum under Emperor Julius Nepos and a daughter Papiania. She married Sidonius Apollinaris, whose letters and panegyrics remain an important source for Avidus's life and times. Avidus followed a course of study typical for a young man of his rank, including law. Before 421 he was sent to the powerful Patricius Flavius Constantius briefly emperor in 421 to ask for a tax reduction for his own country, this embassy was successful. His relative Theodorus was hostage at the court of the king of Visigoths, Theodoric I. In 425-426 Avidus went and met him and the king, who let Avidus enter his own court. Here, around 439, Avidus met the son of Theodoric, Theodoric II, who later became king. Avidus inspired the young Theodoric to study Latin poets. He then started a military career serving under the Magister Militum Aetius in his campaign against the Juthungi and the Norics and against the Burgundians 436. In 437, after being elevated to the rank of Vir Illustris, he returned to Avernia, where he held a high office, probably Magister Militum per Gallias. In the same year he defeated a group of Hunnic raiders near Clermont and obliged Theodoric to lift the siege of Narbonne. In 439 he became Praetorian Prefect of Gaul and renewed the friendship treaty with the Visigoths. Before the summer of 440, he retired to private life at his estate, Aviticum, near Clermont. Here he lived until 451 when the Huns, led by Attila, invaded the Western Roman Empire. Avidus persuaded Theodoric into an alliance with Rome, and the combined forces of Theodoric and Aetius defeated Attila in the Battle of Shalon. Theodoric died in the battle. <laughs> Rise to the throne In the late spring of 455, Avidus was recalled to service by Emperor Petronius Maximus and was elevated to the rank of Magister Militum, probably Presentalis. Maximus sent Avidus in an embassy to the court of Theodoric II, who had succeeded to his father, at Toulouse. This embassy probably confirmed the new king and his people as Fodorati of the Empire and asked for their support for the new emperor. While Avidus was at Theodoric's court, news came of the death of Petronius Maximus the 31st of May and of the sack of Rome by the Vandals of Geyseric. Theodoric acclaimed Avidus emperor in Toulouse. On 9 July, the new emperor was acclaimed by the Gallic chiefs gathered in Viernum, near Arles, Arles, and later, around 5 August, before Avidus reached Rome, he received the recognition of the Roman Senate. Avidus stayed in Gaul for three months, to consolidate his power in the region that was the centre of his support, and later went to Italy with a Gallic army, probably reinforced with a Gothic force. He probably travelled to Noricum to restore the imperial authority in that province, and then passed through Ravenna, where he left a Gothic force under the new Patricius and Magister Militum Remistus, a Visigoth. On 21 September, finally, he entered Rome. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Consolidation of power. The effective power of Avidus depended on the support of all the major players in the Western Roman Empire in the mid 5th century. The new emperor needed the support of both the civil institutions, the Roman Senate and the Eastern Roman Emperor Marcion, as well as that of the army and its commanders the generals Majorian and Ricimer and the Vandals of Geyseric. On 1 January 456, Avidus took the consulate, as traditionally the emperors held the consulate in the first year upon assuming the purple. However, his consulate sign collegia without a second consul was not recognized by the Eastern Court, which nominated two consuls, Iohannes and Varans. The fact that the two courts did not agree on a couple of consuls but each nominated its own means that despite the efforts of Avidus to receive the recognition of the Eastern Emperor, the relationship between the two halves of the empire was not optimal. Topic: <laughs> Foreign Policy Treaties under Marcion and a treaty of 442 between Emperor Valentinian III and the Vandal King Geyseric had failed to reduce Vandal incursions and raids along the Italian coast. Avidus's own efforts secured a temporary winter truce with them, but in March 456, Vandals destroyed Capua. Avidus sent Ricimer to defend Sicily, and the Romans defeated the Vandals twice, once in a land battle near Agrigento and another in a naval battle off Corsica. During the reign of Avidus, the Visigoths expanded into Hispania, nominally under Roman authorization but actually in their own interests. In 455, Avidus had sent an ambassador, comes Fronto, to the Subi and then to Theodoric II to ask them to formally recognize Roman rule. When the Subi invaded the Roman province of Hispania Terraconensis, the Visigoths attacked and defeated them 5 the October 456 at the Campus Paramus, 12 miles from Astorga, on the banks of the Orbigo Urbicus, subsequently occupying the province as nominal fodorati of the empire. <laughs> Fall In the meantime, resentment amongst the population of Italy against the foreigner Avidus grew. The Gallo-Roman emperor had given to other members of the Gallo-Roman aristocracy many key offices of the public administration usually filled by Romans. Furthermore, the population of Rome, devastated by the sack of Rome, suffered from food shortages due to the vandal control of the naval routes, aggravated by the requirements of the foreign troops that had arrived with Avidus. The imperial treasury was almost empty and, after disbanding his Visigoth guard because of popular pressure, Avidus was obliged to pay their huge wages by melting down and selling the bronze of some statues, counting on the popular discontent, on the disbandment of the imperial guard, and on the prestige gained through their victories. Ricimer and the Comes Domesticorum Majorian rebelled against Avidus. The emperor was obliged to leave Rome in early autumn and to move north. Ricimer had the Roman Senate depose Avidus and ordered the murder of the Magister Militum Remistus in the Palladium at Class, ancient port of Ravenna. On 17 September 456, Avidus decided to react. First, he chose Messianus, one of his collaborators in his embassy to the Visigoths ordered by Petronius Maximus, as the new Magister Militum. Then he probably went to Gaul says to, Erelate, to collect all the available forces, probably the Visigoth guard he had just disbanded. Finally, he led his forces against the troops of Ricimer, near Piacenza. The emperor and his army entered the city and attacked the huge army led by Ricimer, but after a great massacre of his men, including Messianus, Avidus fled on 17 or 18 October 456. In the immediate aftermath Ricimer spared his life, but forced him to become bishop of Piacenza. <laughs> Death Avidus's Gallic supporters may still have recognized him as emperor, despite his deposition. Sidonius Apollinaris tells of a failed coup d'état in Gaul organized by one Marcellus and probably aimed at bringing Avidus back on the throne. The contemporary historian Hydatius, who lived in Spain, considered the year 457 the third of Avidus's reign. Avidus's own intentions are not known, nor are the manner and date of his death, of which there are several versions. In some, he was told that the Roman Senate had condemned him to death, and so he tried to flee to Gaul, officially traveling there to bring donations to the Basilica of St. Julian in Avernia, his homeland. According to Gregory of Tours, he died during this journey. Other sources have him strangled or starved to death, by order of his successor. 
Avidus died in 457, or late in 456, very soon after his deposition, and was buried at Briud, next to St. Julian's tomb. <laughs> Footnotes <laughs>